Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're here at Tampa Honda, of course, in Tampa, Florida, and I have an updated SUV that has some off-road changes for you. This is a new, updated, refreshed, changed up 2022 Honda Passport Trail Sport Edition. But before we get into this midsize SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Honda. Of course, you know they've been doing the business for decades when it comes to that reliability and versatility of their vehicles. One thing that they hold true to this very day is having a lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs to fit everybody's lifestyle. Now, with this Passport, the name came back. The vehicle came back in a very different way than the original Passport from the 1990s. But Honda, not resting on their laurels, wanted to do a change-up for 2022. What they wanted to do is, is they wanted to bring some extra off-road capability. Now what's fascinating is we live in a world where many manufacturers are getting rid of sedans for SUVs and the midsize SUV, it seems that all of them have three rows. Well, what happens if you don't want three rows? Say you don't have those extra kids to fit in that small little tiny row. Well, guess what? Your passport here could be the passport to two row adventure. And now for 2022, having a trail sport edition, that's gonna be your off-road extension of this vehicle. Now, what's interesting is that trail sport is gonna wind up being on other Honda vehicles. But for now, Honda wanted to go with the Passport, bring that off-road capability, and now on top of that, fight against another major midsize SUV competitor. What is that? That's gonna be the Kia Sorento. Remember, they're fresh off of a redesign. And what's interesting is that when they redesigned the Sorento, Kia brought an off-road trim known as the X-Line. So what I wanna find out is, if you wanna get a midsize SUV, should you go with the two-row Passport Trail Sport Edition, or should you go with that Sorento and have to suck it up and have that extra third row and maybe not as much space? Let's go ahead, let's find out what's different for 2022 and see which one you should be bringing for your daily adventures. Let's find out. Right off the bat, this, the Passport here has a total different look to the front. They actually redesigned the front end of the Passport, especially on this Trail Sport Edition. So you're getting a little bit wider front end. They actually widen the track a little bit as well. The track is the space in between both front wheels and tires. But with this refresh, you're gonna notice we have new headlight housing design, LED daytime running lamps. They have a projector beam LED style headlight. And I like the way everything else is blacked out on the interior, except for the reflectors and just a little bit of silver. Now, one of my favorite touches is what they did with the actual lower bumper area. You'll see how they extended it out, made this a functional side air curtain. I like the flat black. I don't mind that. That's gonna take a better beating. You do get LED fog lamps located all the way down in the lower area. And on top of these LED fog lamps, you're also getting functional air intakes on the corners as well. So something that they wanted to make sure that if they redesigned it, which they did, they also made it functional on top of that. Plus you got that LED lighting, which is gonna give you a nice bright white light. Coming across the front, you're gonna get a specific grill to the trail sport. First of all, you get a tasteful badge. Obviously on the X-Line, the Sorento X-Line, you're gonna get a badge as well on the side, but I'm really digging what that trail sport badge means to Honda being that off-road adventure addition. I like the bright orange and that's something to remember because there's orange trim around this whole vehicle to give it that little extra touch. You got your Honda badge, fully functional, uh, grill openings in the center here. And then working your way down, we have some flat black and flat black on this lower orp, uh, opening. And then of course, you're gonna get the dark gunmetal gray. Now, this does sit higher than your standard Passport. You got over eight inches of ground clearance. And when you're comparing that to the Sorento X-Line, you actually have a little bit more ground clearance with the Passport Trail Sport Edition. Something to think about, but let me know what vehicle you think looks better to you from the front. Is it this Passport Trail Sport Edition or is it the Sorento X-Line? Put it in the comment section. As we rise on up, you'll notice how they work the hood. The hood is exactly the same. The good news is though, it's a very clean design. The bad news, I'm not digging this. 
I don't know why the hood sits higher than the front fascia. I wish that it would be flush instead of being raised up like that because it sort of looks like the hood isn't closed. But the hood is closed, so I don't know what the purpose of that styling design. It's probably, I'm going to say, for crash safety testing, the way that they had to design it for that setup. But other than that, I'm not really understanding what they did there, so I am going to have to zonk that. But coming around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire setup? Guess what? All new wheels for 2022, especially on this Trail Sport Edition. So you're looking at an 18-inch wheel, dark gunmetal metallic gray with the machined aluminum finishes. You'll notice how we have bright orange calipers on our particular Passport Trail Sport. I like that nice touch. Fully ventilated, like I said, on the rotors. And then what you're gonna see is, is how they rework the suspension. There is actually your shock absorber with the spring. Rework that for that off-road duty. And you do have a little bit of flat black, which I don't mind around the fender openings, just because this is more of an off-road style vehicle. This will take a better beating. And you'll also notice on the tires, these Firestone off-road tires, you'll see the extra armor that they have on the sidewall. Not really crazy off-road on the tread, which is good. That's gonna cut down on road noise, but they did beef up the sidewall to give you that protection against rocks. And if you're wondering, well, what's the size of this? 245 on the width and a meaty 60 series sidewall. Of course, we're gonna have all wheel drive getting that power to the ground and it could send power forward and rear from the front to the rear for the traction situations. So something to think about with that technology compared to the Kia Sorento. Now coming down the side, you do get color matched on the mirror caps, LED turn singles, just like on the Sorento X-Line. I do think it was so smart to just go flat black around the window treatment. We got color matched on the door handles and then flat black along the bottom section. But you could see, I mean, literally you could see how much more space we have between a standard Passport and where the ground is compared to the underside of this Passport Trail Sport. Raised roof rails, that's gonna be great for when you get your cargo basket, you got your mountain bikes up there, and then everything else from this portion back is of course gonna be your standard Passport, but that's not a bad thing. You got a large rear glass window in the quarter panel here, and then coming around the back of the Passport Trail Sport Edition, you're gonna get that nice, long, low roof spoiler, all color matched. They do put the wiper here. I wish they would have tucked that in underneath just to clean up the rear glass, but we have this flat black finish coming across the center, no chrome, blacked out on the Passport badge. That kind of blends in real clean with our particular Passport, and then you'll also see our all-wheel drive badge and the Trail Sport badge are both blacked out with the red trim lining to give it that extra pop. Now, coming all the way down, they reworked this whole lower rear bumper. These exhausts look like they're right off of an MDX A-Spec, the Acura MDX A-Spec. Kind of a slash cut, round opening with the stainless steel tip. Really like that look with the gunmetal metallic gray, and you're gonna get one exhaust on each side. And definitely from the back, I love the way the Passport looks compared to the Sorento X-Line. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and compare power numbers between this and that key. All right guys, we got the hood open. You do have a prop rod, but you know what? We're not gonna zonk it because you're gonna get that tried and true power plan. Now this is gonna be the biggest difference between the Honda and the Kia. First of all, I am gonna zonk the engine cover. It does look like a trash can, Lynn. I wish they would have done something a little bit extra special for especially the Trail Sport Edition. But what are we looking at? We're looking at underneath that plastic cover, that 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. Pumps out 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, and it is mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission. Now, if you're comparing this to the Kia, the Kia has a small displacement inline four turbocharged engine. Does not have as much horsepower as this Passport and then instead of having a traditional torque converter automatic transmission, we have a DCT transmission, an eight-speed DCT in the Kia Sorento X-Line. But like I said, in our Passport, we have a nine-speed automatic. It's gonna make us go zero to 60 in 6.1 seconds. Top speed is 114 miles an hour. 
like I said, we got the all-wheel drive. The vehicle weighs 4,250 pounds. MPGs, 19 in the city, 24 on the highway, and you could tow up to 5,000 pounds with your Passport Trail Sport. But why don't we go ahead, let's get to the interior and see what changes are in store for 2022 on our Passport. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Honda Passport Trail Sport Edition. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, this is a tough choice. I thought I was already sold on the Sorento, especially the X-Line trim. I like the changes that they did with the redesign, but I remember having a Passport back when I was in college, and boy, did I have some good times. But uh, of course, bottom line is gonna be pricing. What is the price of this Honda Passport Trail Sport Edition? Very good question. MSRP, for the way that you see this one, is right around $43,695. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panel. So door panels, style is the same as before, but there's some slight alterations. I like the soft touch material up top. You'll notice this smoky gray finish that they have right above the door handle there. I wish they would have done something with the door handle. The flat black plastic kind of looks a little rental car-ish, but they did bring some orange stitching. Like I said, that Trail Sport Edition is all about the orange stitching. Nice, soft on the armrest, no gloss black. And the better news is, check out the Twinkie tray. That is the official mid setup of the Twinkie tray. Two Twinkies, plus you have enough room there for a, a can of maybe some peanuts, some maybe honey roasted nuts. And then the door pocket, you could easily put, I would say, six pepperoni hot pockets in there. But that's about it. Going from the door panel to the dash, soft touch material. You got your simulated stitching. We do have more of that darker gray finish. I like the way that it's not gloss black. And then coming to the center stack, this is going to be the difference between this and the Sorento. Sorento, you have a 10.25 inch infotainment system screen on the Honda. We're still working with the eight inch system. Now, just because it's eight inches doesn't make it bad. It's just that there's a little bit more tech with obviously the setup in the Sorento. But we do have, of course, your navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, full touchscreen capability. And we have, of course, the volume knob, which is important. But let me show you something that's kind of cool. Maybe you don't want the icons for these different app adjustments the way that they are from the factory. Guess what? You could change it. So you click on it and then you drag. And then you click on it and then you drag. And now you could set it up and you hit done. Have it set up any which way you want. So it's like going to Burger King and having it your way. You go Honda Passport, you could set up the infotainment system your way. You got, of course, three pages of information, lots of versatility, lots of variety there. We got our trip computer that's going to adjust everything to your range, your average fuel economy. And if you're saying, well, Joe, why is your average fuel economy zero? It's because this car only has 13 miles on it. That's why. But we'll get more to that when we hit the open road. Let me throw it into reverse. Not the best resolution, but the good news is you do have the different angles, which is really nice. And I do like the trajectory. The one big zonk is that there's no forward-facing camera. And to me, having an off-road vehicle, you want to have that forward-facing camera. But we have that nice, brightly red-lit start-stop button. You got your dual climate controls. Control the rear AC as well. You have another Twinkie box here for three Twinkies. We got heated seats, three stages of it. You got your wireless charging, 12-volt, and a USB-A there. And they redesigned this area to fit larger phones, which is wonderful. So that was really smart for 2022. Two cup holders. There's more of that gray finish. This is going to control your nine-speed automatic. We got hill descent control. And you hit drive twice. That puts you into sport mode. So really easy to figure that out. And it really frees up the area in the center. There's your Honda key fob. About the same quality when looking at the Kia key fob. You do have remote start. My one other zonk, besides not having a forward-facing camera in here, is no actual armrest. So what that does is it frees up space for a purse, for a bag. You could put like a bag of potatoes here. But 
But other than that, you got to use these captain's chair armrests. And I really, they're not my favorite. I guess, like I said, you could have it like this and you could kind of pick the earwax out of your ear, you know, or something like that. But the, here's the great news. You ready for this? One, two, three, open sesame. Bam. We have tons of storage. You have a sliding, a sliding Twinkie tray. Everybody likes to slide their Twinkies around. Slide it back. Slide it forward. Slide it back. And then the full-size bag, a lightsaber. Plus, you got more connectivity in here. We got another 12-volt and then another USB-A and an aux jack. So that's another nice touch. I'm surprised they didn't put any USB-Cs. Let me know how you feel about that, whether you're okay with the A's or you need the C's. See this. Look at this. We got that red embroidery, uh, red, orange embroidery, trail sport with the mountain range. That's actually the Appalachians. That's where they took that design from with the stitching. Soft touch all the way down. You're going to have full electric assist for the passenger and the driver. And then on top of that, you're getting a standard size sunroof, which is really nice. But why don't you come on over to the business end? I got some orange stitching on this steering wheel. I'm dying to show you. Come on All right, over. guys, driver's side, the business side in this Passport Trail Sport Edition. You'll notice that straight from the factory, you do get the all-weather protection floor mats. Obviously, if you're going off-roading, you're going to get into some muddy, dirty situations, and they wanted you to have these custom floor mats to protect the carpet. You do have your electric seat adjustments, easy to get to, including the lower lumbar, which is important. I'm six feet tall. I'm swimming in space, and I think this is where you're going to feel a little bit more open and airy compared to the Sorrento X-Line. Steering wheel, I promised you some orange stitching. They did do the orange stitching all the way through, and I like the way they put the two different types of leather here, which is really nice. Flat black on everything on the steering wheel when it comes to controls. You do have paddles to go up and down that nine-speed automatic transmission. And then the dash, they did refresh the digital display, so you have a nice center there with your tachometer digital speedometer right now i have it displaying the all-wheel drive how the torque delivery of the all-wheel drive system is going to be and then you could really just go through all different information in that center display you have an analog coolant gauge and fuel gauge but they really cleaned up the graphics made that look a lot nicer but why don't we go ahead let's get into the back seat and see how much room is back there for a little camping hanky panky Let's go check it out. All right, guys, backseat time. And you know what? This is where the Passport really does well. Because you're not fighting for space for a third row, they really allow the room in here to be plentiful for these backseat passengers. And I think that's where you're going to see another big plus over the Kia Sorento X-Line. Now, backs of the seats have large pockets back here. You could easily put, I would say, two bags of Tostina's pizza rolls. If you're going camping, bring the nice frozen processed food. You could go ahead and heat those up. And then in the back area, to heat or keep you cooled, you do have rear AC vents. We do have a Jolly Rancher tray. And we're not done. You got a home power source and two USB A's back here, plus the all weather protection on the floor mats. And then, of course, when it comes to hanky panky, you need to make a little bit of extra room. You got the sliding capability of the third of the mid row here. And then it even reclines a little bit on top of that, which is really nice. Plus, you do also get a great armrest. And I'm not zonking it because they give you enough real estate on both sides for an actual arm. And you can put your two cup holders here. But why don't we go ahead, let's get into that cargo area because I'm dying to take this for a little bit of a spin. All right, guys, time to get into the cargo area. This is where you're going to see, hands down, the Passport brings the business, brings the heat when it comes to just sheer amount of space. Now, I know you might be saying, well, Joe, my sister has a Sorrento X-Line and she just leaves the third row down. That's fine and dandy, but let me show you something. When you don't have a third row, not only do you not have to worry about putting the seat down, but you have no seat belts and they're actually able to design the rear cargo area wider than if this was a three row SUV, say like a Honda Pilot. But how much space are we looking at? You're looking at over 41 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold the seats down, it goes to over 100 cubic feet of space. I like the way they do the full weather protection, not only just for the floor mats like we showed you, but also for the cargo area. You know, you got all those dirty things that you bring for camping, for going to the beach, maybe you're going surfing, maybe you got your dogs back here. Easy to keep this clean. 
on the driver's side, you have your zinger notch. So you can put two boxes of zingers in this notch area. This is official. Honda actually designed it specifically for zingers. I was supposed to have another box, but I accidentally ate those. So I apologize for just having one box. You do have a 12 volt. Just don't put your zinger in there. It's going to hurt. And then on the passenger side, you have a little nook for a family bag size of Skittles. And of course, if you're going camping, at least with me, you better have some marshmallows for the s'mores. The best news is, is that this isn't it. You then can lift up this area. And this is where the Passport separates itself from the Sorento. Look at this nice storage area, easy to clean. We just have just a tip of the iceberg when it comes to snacks, but we got, of course, if you're gonna go camping, there's gonna be a lot of fooling around the tents. You wanna make sure we have some breath mints so everybody can get rid of that Funyun smelly breath before they start making out. We got family bag size of Twizzlers and tons of Twinkies that you can fit in here, plus some. And then, are you ready for the magic show? Watch this. One, two, three. Who says me? I do. Push the button, seats go down one side, and then, of course, the other. Boom. Go to Costco. That's totally flat. We actually got a level and made sure that this back area, it's totally flat from the rear all the way to the midsection of this vehicle for those large objects over at Costco, especially if you're gonna go get yourself a 90 inch Samsung LED TV. But you know what? If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go see how this Passport Transport Edition drives compared to the Sorento in a little on throttle spin. Let's go do it. All right guys, we left Tampa Honda. We're in this 2022 Honda Passport Trailsport Edition. Right away, you're gonna like how you sit in this vehicle. You have a great view out the windshield that digital display that's been refreshed for 2022 is looking real crisp with that large digital speedometer. And what I have showing in the rest of the screen there is the torque display showing where the power is going from the front wheels to the rear wheels with our all wheel drive system. Getting to that infotainment system is well within reach. And when you're comparing this to the Sorento, x-line i think what i really enjoy about driving this passport trail sport more than the sorrento x-line is i just like the naturally aspirated engine that 3.5 liter v6 has gobs of torque and really pulls linear through the torque delivery system plus and the and the torque curve plus with the nine speed automatic that traditional nine speed automatic that really helps just with the overall driving capability compared to the DCT that you're gonna get in the Sorento X-Line. But like the placement that they put with the wireless charging, you got your heated seats. It would have been nice to have ventilated seats at this price point like we pointed out. And for me, having no third row makes sense because you just free up all that room and you don't have the extra seat belts and all that dangling around in the back area like you do on the Sorento because of that third row. All right guys, we're gonna get out on the highway and see how this Passport Trail Sport Edition glides down the road. What's great is, is that you hit that drive button for a second time and it actually puts it into a sport mode. So that's something that you could kind of change the personality a little bit. And remember, all of the benefits for this trail sport, of course, is all about off-road. And what I'll do is I'll leave the link to the Passport Trail Sport review that we did off-roading so that you could really see what the off-road capability of a, a, is of this vehicle. But with this particular one, going down the highway with the chopped up pavement, very, very smooth, and I think that's where that off-road change that they made to the suspension and the tires and the chassis refinement is actually gonna pay dividends on the highway like this because it's gonna help smooth everything out, which is wonderful. I wish that they would have made the infotainment system a little bit larger for this Trail Sport Edition, especially when looking for some type of forward-facing camera 
capability. And I think that's the thing with the Sorento having the larger screen is uh, a, a nicer setup to say the least. But the space in here is way more plentiful than in the Sorento, especially without having the center console armrest and just having these captain's chair armrests. So the Zonk is the armrest is small, but it does free up a lot of space in the, the front cabin area. Of course, rear passengers are gonna get some really nice room as well because you're not fighting for that extra row in the back, the third row that you find on the Sorento, but drives really, really smooth. Love the leather that they put on the steering wheel. All of the great stitching. But let's see how on throttle is on the highway here. So if you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go. Transmission drops down and we are off. So like I was saying, I think that this conventional torque converter transmission is going to make you a lot happier when you're driving compared to the DCT that they use in the Sorento. And not having a turbocharged engine, you're not waiting for boost to come into play. Very, very linear torque delivery that pulls, like I was saying, through the whole rev range. All right, guys, on throttle, here we go. Around this turn. Like I said, the suspension, everything really works well. Not really floaty. Nothing that's gonna go make you feel like you're gonna tip over. Now there is a bit of body roll, but that's to be expected because we are higher than your standard passport. Plus we are on those off-road specific style tires. Something a little bit beefier on the sidewall. The great news is, is road noise is kept to a minimum. So it's not a very aggressive uh, off-road tire to help with that noise, to help keep the noise down. And that's the thing, in this cabin, even with the sunroof and everything else, you're not getting a lot of wind no noise and road noise, which is uh, wonderful to report. Throttle sensitivity is really nice. And plus, if you're not used to driving a little bit larger SUV, I think you're gonna feel really comfortable in this particular vehicle, just because of how easy it is to drive. But let me go ahead, I'm going to, uh, come to a stop here because nobody is behind us and we're going to go on throttle here to showcase the all-wheel drive watch the gauge in the center on throttle here we go see how it goes all four corners nice smooth shifts from that nine speed automatic and then having of course that honda reliability is going to be very important to a lot of people especially when using this as your daily driver, when using this as your vehicle to go have fun and do some off-roading. But you get the all-weather floor mats, which are gonna help keep the interior nice and neat and clean. And then I'm telling you, there's just something about the black paint job on this particular one that really gives it that little extra special look to it. But hopefully this has been a nice overall feel of what the Passport Trail Sport brings to the table, especially if you're gonna use it as your daily driver and comparing it to the Sorento X-Line. We're gonna get back to Tampa Honda and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been one heck of a day here at Tampa Honda. Definitely wanna thank Sam and the whole team for getting us their very first, this is their very first 2022 Passport Trail Sport edition. Let me know what you think. Has Honda done enough to make this be that adventure vehicle that you want to get your butt in behind the wheel? Or are you going to go with that redesigned Kia Sorento and go X-Line and have the three-row capability? Let me know in the comment section how you're going to spend your hard-earned money. I'm dying to find out. But until we meet again, if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, Click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radies Rise merch. Got to give it up to the queen behind the lens. Working it like a champ. Show Lori some love in that comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next one.